Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending this meeting. So I'm Paul Renault, research engineer at France Energie Marine, and today I will present some recent progresses regarding uh, hydrodynamic loads uh, for floating offshore wind turbines. Uh, so the main objective is that to better characterize and estimate summing loads acting of floating offshore wind turbines, and also to provide uh, an operational methodology for incorporating breaking wave loads in coupled uh, models. So we first investigated a strip theory model, which are um, high fidelity levels uh, model because they are fed with the kinematics and the free surface shape of numerical breaking weight. So we know, uh, we have the detail of the numerical breaking weight. And then we developed uh, a new simplified formulation that accounts for the floater dynamics of the third motion and the pitch angle. And then, so I will present a, a new methodology to derive a, a realistic uh, a breaking wave load acting on the on the cylinder, but using only the linear wave properties. Uh, so the strip theory model, so yeah, so they are said, uh, so actually, so we have generated phase focused breaking waves using uh, polynomial solvers. <clears throat> and so we use the geometry and the kinematics of a breaking wave in the strip theory model. Um, so we use a, a 2D profile, um, so which means that actually the, the wave is not affected by the cylinder, which is the foot color hypothesis. Um, so the cylinder is divided in thin strips, and we apply a two-dimensional model in uh, on the strip. So in the impact, we are dealing with floating offshore wind turbine. So we need to account for the dynamics of the floater, but also uh, floating offshore wind turbine are truncated cylinder. Um, and so basically, uh, a large portion of the weighted area could be um, above the mean water level, and in particular in the steep front uh, of the wave. And so we need also to account for the contribution of the partially in the strips. And this contribution can be significant. Uh, so we developed basically uh, three different uh, strip theory approach, uh, which are somehow uh, like uh, Morrison type equations, but using variable hydrodynamic coefficient with respect to uh, the penetration depth of the strips uh, in the fluid. And we have the slamming contribution, which is here proportional to uh, the relative kinematics between the body and the fluid velocity. And we account for the pitch angle by considering uh, the horizontal component of the fluid velocity in the cylinder reference frame. So we applied uh, uh, two, two, two models based on Wagner's theory. So Wagner's theory basically uh, is a model that accounts for the weighted correction during the impact. And so we can see here that we are able to well predict the variation of the slamming load uh, with respect to the pitch angle and also with respect uh, to the surge motion, to the surge velocity. Um, so here is, for instance, here, so on the left, um, the load time history acting uh, on the four different sections of the mock-up. On the right, we can see the, the propagation of a fully nonlinear potential wave. Uh, so basically, we are able to well predict the load on the different sections, in particular, so in the second and the third section. So um, they are partially immersed, and we have a fair agreement uh, when we account for variable hydrodynamic coefficient with respect to the penetration of the body in the fluid. Uh, the main difference is actually uh, on the first section, which is directly impacted by the jet of water, and you can see that with the model, we highly overestimate the load at the early stage uh, of the impact. And so this could be due actually to the, the difference in stage of breaking between the 2D configuration, so without the cylinder, and the, um, and the, and the situation in the, in the waste tank when we are for the cylinder and the vessel that basically disturbed uh, the wave. Also, we can note that we have a good agreement when we account so for the for the fictitious body continuation model. So with this model, basically, so it's a, a vacuum type model, uh, which accounts for flow or non viscous flow separation during the impact. And you can see here that the load decay is in good agreement when we account for this uh, for this theory. Uh, so the main conclusion is that we have a good overall agreement with the experimental data. We are able to well uh, predict the variation of the load with respect to um, the dynamics of the floater. Also, the load in the partial in the strips is uh, well estimated. <clears throat> Modeling for separation gives a better estimate during load decay. Uh, so the fictitious body continuation model uh, is, uh, is just suitable uh, to model slamming load. <clears throat> and also the slamming load, or the magnitude of the slamming load is well estimated when we account uh, for the, the vertical variation of the horizontal fluid velocity uh, in the crest. So also, there are some strong uh, diffraction effects uh, when the cylinder is in the wave field. So for instance, the stage of breaking is not exactly the same in 2D and in 3D. And also, for, for instance, for speeding breakers, uh, we have seen that the crest is highly uh, distorted um, by the cylinder. And so the foot cradle of assumption, considering a distant wave, can be uh, very conservative for this specific case. 
Uh, so whereas strip survey model are not very convenient to use because we need a, a detailed representation uh, of the web. Uh, so we developed a new stemming load formula that account, uh, that accounts only for a few uh, global parameters. <coughs> so it is based on the vertical variation of the horizontal fluid velocity and the crest and also a cross separation during the impact. So basically here, the, the problem is simplified. Uh, we account only for vertical front that progressively penetrates um, the, uh, the inclined structure. Uh, so the, um, the stemming coefficient is from the fictitious body continuation model, so which is a Wagner model that extends the validity of Wagner theory uh, by basically adding fictitious line to the cylinder so we can compute the load after cross separation. And we can say that <coughs> the stemming coefficient predicted with the uh, fictitious body continuation model uh, match well the experiment from Campbell and Tinder. Uh, so we applied uh, this uh, formulation uh, to uh, the wave number three that the client presented on different configurations. So we can see on the left we have the, the fixed configuration, the inclined configuration, and then the, the surging configuration. On the right, uh, it's also for wave three, but for another uh, surge velocity. And uh, I also applied the formulation for wave for wave twelve, which is also a strong plunging breaking wave. And we can see that we have very good agreement in terms of maximum standing load and also in terms of load decay. So here, as uh, in the simplified model, we account for vertical front for the, um, the vertical configurations. Um, the maximum load is immediately reached because the standing coefficient um, for a cylinder uh, is, uh, is maximum at the first instant of penetration of the body in the fluid. However, when we account for an inclined uh, cylinder, uh, the rising load uh, is much more so. Uh, so how can this formula be used in the design context? Uh, so basically, we need uh, to uh, to infer uh, the different quest parameters um, so so we can uh, properly use this formulation. So here, so we have generated a, a database that Florian presented, and the idea is to provide a really uh, a usable uh, parametric model to estimate the different quest parameters. <coughs> so the different quest parameters involved in the slamming formula are parameterized uh, as a function of the breaking severity. Uh, so, for instance, we have the kerning factor. So the kerning factor is uh, one of the main parameters involved in breaking wave impact. Uh, so, it characterizes the, uh, the portion of the wave contributing to the impact, and it is often calibrated so that the model matches the experiment or it is extracted uh, from the time history. And here we provide a very simple criterion which is based only on the free surface uh, slope, on the value of the free surface slope. Um, and then we also parameterize the free surface elevation of maximum fluid velocity, as we can see here, the variation of fluid velocity. And one also one of the main novelty is also uh, we provide a parametric model for the standing duration. Uh, in, the, in the literature, we find mainly uh, one uh, standing duration, which depends only on the phase uh, velocity. However, we have seen uh, from the experiment that uh, we have a much larger variability in the standing duration than the variability of the phase celerity. So here we provide a parametric model that relies actually basically on the thickness uh, of the crest. Um, so um, yeah, so how can this formula be used in the design context? So the, the, the main objective of the impact is to incorporate uh, breaking wave load in global flood simulation. But basically in global flood simulation, the wave field um, is computed using linear theory. So how can we uh, reproduce a realistic breaking wave load using only the linear wave properties? So in this third part, I present a new methodology uh, which aims at reproducing uh, the load that has been measured on the mock-up in the wave tank, but using the linear properties from the, the same experimental wave packet. So basically, we divide uh, the load in two parts. So a non-breaking wave load, which is induced by uh, the, the lower part of the wave, so under the breaking crest which can be computed using a non-linear regular wave, which is done basically in standard practice using a stream function, for instance. And then we have the slamming contribution at the top uh, of the wave. So it can be computed using the, the engineering formula and the different wave parameters. Uh, so there are five steps in this methodology. So the first one, uh, so we detect breaking in the linear framework, so using the linear equivalent breaking threshold uh, that uh, Jean-François introduced. Uh, at breaking, we compute the total energy, the impulse, and the breaking severity. From the, from the total energy and the impulse, uh, we find uh, an equivalent steady surface gravity wave of same energy and same impulse. And here we find 
uh, we use an algorithm um, from the Clermont Educate uh, that, pro that can uh, compute a limiting wave, uh, limiting CD surface cavity wave. So then the non breaking wave load is computing using uh, one of the sub theory models that has been uh, developed uh, in the impact, uh, which is based on the variation of the adding mass during the penetration depth during, uh, during the immersion of the body in the fluid. And then uh, when the portion uh, uh, corresponding to slamming is weighted, uh, basically we have a vertical portion uh, as we can see here to, to mimic the breaking wave quest. And then the slamming load is applied using uh, the slamming formulation. Uh, so also we have um, a linear non-linear uh, transformation regarding to breaking severity. So we are able to, to estimate the breaking severity, well, non-linear breaking severity from the linear breaking severity. And from this, we are able to use the parametric model that I just presented. Uh, so here is, for instance, uh, the comparison uh, when we apply the methodology to a fixed cylinder. Um, so, um, so here, so, yeah, so we generate the, the linear wave uh, using the experimental wave packet and we reconstruct uh, the load. Uh, so here, the, the load obtained with the present methodology is highlighted uh, in, uh, with the, the, the red dash line. <clears throat> and we can see that we have a really good agreement uh, with the experimental data in terms of breaking wave load, but also in terms of standing load. Um, for the sake of comparison, I present also uh, different uh, non-breaking wave load formulations, so Morrison type equation, Morrison fully nonlinear, also the Rainy model, and the Rainy model on which we had um, Poisson formulation, which is also a standing load formulation. And um, one important feature is the, uh, the, the methodology is basically based on the reconstruction, uh, the geometrical reconstruction of the wave. And here we have a good uh, uh, correspondence between the maximum uh, non-breaking load and the, the slamming load, which what we cannot have uh, when we account only for Morrison equation accounting for fully submerged waves. So we applied uh, this methodology to all the waves that has been measured uh, in the wave film. And so here, for instance, I compare the maximum load acting on the body, and we have a really good agreement with the experimental data. And also uh, on the here we can see the the slamming duration. Uh, and so with the, the present parametric model, we are able to well estimate uh, well, the large variability of the slamming duration, uh, while with the, um, with the current uh, approach, so which is based only on the phase velocity, uh, we cannot really uh, estimate uh, the, the large variability uh, of the slamming duration. And actually, this is also uh, quite uh, important if we need to, uh, for instance, uh, to assess the, the impulse, uh, the load impulse acting uh, on the body. Uh, so uh, to conclude, so I presented different load models, and so basically in, uh, in the sub-theory models and also in this new engineering formula, we account for the, the cylinder dynamics the, or the relative motion between the body and the fluid velocity, and also for um, the pitch angle. Uh, so this model has been applied to different ways for different configuration, and we have a good overall agreement with the experimental data. So this new engineering formula has to be used with the different parametric models for the nonlinear wave parameter. Uh, that has been parameterized as a function of the breaking severity. Um, so, however, the main limitation is actually uh, the foot cooler assumption. So, in, in all these models, we assume that the wave is not disturbed uh, by the cylinder, but for instance, for spilling breakers, uh, we have seen that the crest is highly uh, perturbated, and so, uh, and, and so the, the load can be highly conservative uh, for these cases. Uh, the main perspective is that uh, we can still improve the slamming formula, in particular by incorporating the curved front. Uh, so we will have a much smoother increase in load, uh, which will be better if we assess than the, the structural response. And also we can have the variability with respect uh, to the breaking location. Uh, as Florian demonstrated, uh, the load is highly sensitive to uh, basically the, the relative position between uh, to the cylinder and the breaking location. And this is something that we can incorporate uh, in, the, in the model. Also, so here the curling factor, so lambda, which defines the portion of the wave contributing to slamming. Um, so here it is based on a quite uh, arbitrary uh, threshold uh, regarding the, the slope of the wave. Uh, however, here uh, in the, in the semi-logical model, um, slamming is characterized uh, by non-viscous flow separation. And so we can, for instance, here easily see uh, the, the separation of the flow during the breaking wave impact. And so this is something that can be eventually measured. So we can measure uh, the, flow the, the height of flow separation, and we can so eventually have a more robust parameterization of the curling factor. And also, so the, the new methodology uh, to derive a realistic hydrodynamic loads from linear wave property 
uh, is currently being implemented in global fraud simulation, and this is what Camille is going to present. Thank you for your attention.